Jacker and FM's Good Morning Angels, Wednesdays on Breakfast with Martin Bester. Right, who do we have next? Vanessa. Vanessa Radain, goeiemorgen, how are you? Good, thanks, how are you? Thanks for joining us. Where are you from? I am from Siabunga Children's Home. And you are based in, is it, am I right, in the Germiston area? That's correct, yes. All right, well tell us more about Siabunga. Siabunga Children's Home currently has 38 kids. Uh, we are a children's home, a CYCC. CYCC. Okay, I'll take you word for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Um, we have some orphans. We have children that are there uh, because they can't be placed at home. Okay. Uh, uh, they've been take away, taken away from social development. Okay. <sighs> Oh. You're doing oh. well. I am so nervous. Sorry. You are, you are do, you're doing well. So you look after how many children? Thirty-eight children. Thirty-eight. Yes. Right. I am the house mother there. I run the home. Well, no wonder um, you, you need to breathe before you start yeah. your day. How do you, how do you even do it? Okay. So and these and these kids are in in the care of Siabonga. Correct. They're in okay. the care of Siabonga. They've been placed with court orders. That's a lot of responsibility, hey? It is. So everything that you do in your own home with your own children, we do times three. We feed them, we we school them, we do homework, we do extramurals, we Mm. send them to gymnastics, we send them to rugby. They have a taste of a real life. Mm. That is our goal. Tell me something. When you're dealing with children like these children at Siabonga, that have already had a pretty rough start from what it sounds like. I mean, rough enough. For them them to be placed. For them to be taken away mm. from their parents, yes. from their homes, and then be placed in a care facility like yourselves. I mean, d- does it, d- you are basically their second chance in life? Correct. That's well, a lot of responsibility. Sec- you are, are their, their security. Zone. You are their new family. Mm. Correct. Their friends. Yes. Does that dawn on you? I mean, do you start your day thinking, this is a whole lot? Yes, hey? yes, yes. How do you do it? Um, with love. <laughs> That's all you can do. Mm. You cannot replace their parents. You cannot replace what happened in their lives. All you can do is, for me, my goal is how many times can I put a smile on their face? Do they talk about it? Yes, sometimes they have to. Mm. Um, a lot of times the trauma comes through their their interaction with other people okay. mm, and their behavior, their um, eating habits, their what mm. have you. So you have to, you have mm. to sit, you have to draw out, see where their strengths are. You have to find their strengths. I guess that's kind of normal for any teenagers. Uh, they hit out in different ways. They express themselves in different ways. And then you as a parent must now figure out a way how to deal with it. Absolutely. But I do also think the trauma of going... Um, even though I'm in the safe space, my family could not take care of me. I do think that is extra trauma on teenagers that generally don't know how to actually handle their emotions or their feelings. So the work you're doing is absolutely incredible. Uh, between the two of you, you've got five children. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Not counting the dogs? Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, how much patience do you need? Plenty. Just for my two. Uh, so I can't imagine being a house mom uh, How much you must need They, they, they just always need the reassurance They mm. always need the hug They always need um, the love So, Talk to me about non-profit How does that work? A non-profit organization is It's the hardest thing no. um, So the only money that you rely on Is from the funding From the mm. government huh. And of course the, the community Yeah Keeping in mind you have to feed these kids five times, sometimes five times a day because it's snack in between. Mm. So it's not just breakfast, lunch and supper. If you do a lunchbox, it's not just a piece of bread. Mm. You have to keep up and they do extra murals, for instance. I think most parents listening with one child knows how much they eat. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> times that by 30. Yeah. No, no, no it's, sure. it's, it's too much. What happened last year um, when it comes to this government funding? What did you have to do? Um, with the funding, you got a 12 month um, uh, SLA, it's a contract. Yeah. So it's from April to May. Okay. As you may, no, sorry, March to April. March to April, okay. okay. You only know you're going to get funding when the funding's in your account. So there's no 
you don't know. So you always have to have a little bit of a backup. Yes. Mm. My deep freezers must be full because that's part of the DSD requirements. Sorry, the co- the funding requirements. Okay. Okay. Your health permits must be right, everything. Mm. The, the, the place that I have, I can house 70 kids. My permit says I can have 50 kids, but my registration says I can only have 36 kids. Currently, I've got 38 kids. It's actually supposed to be 36 kids, so let's stick with 36 kids that I have. We won't tell. Okay, no. thank you. <laughs> so do you have to reapply? I have so to you, reapply you, 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 you every to, single time. Every That's year you have to pressure. reapply. You have to have documentation. Your fire extinguishers must be mm, correct. Mm, sure. Your, your no. permits must be placed and everything. How's your funding doing this year? The funding this year was the worst ever, especially with people like Epworth Home in our environment. Why? Closing. Um, their funding hasn't come through. They're not getting funding. We still at this stage don't know. We don't know if we're getting our funding. Uh, Epworth Home was uh, approached and said they're not getting funding. They're closing their doors. Epworth Home has been running for 105 years. They've got 60 kids that they have to place either back at home or another facility. Very scary. That for us was, I'm still very worried. Yes, I've got the community helping me. I've started a pledge of 150 rand per person mm-hmm. to help us. So I've got, in case something that does happen, I've got a backup. Plan. Mm-hmm. That's my thing. Do the companies and the people in the Germiston area do they do they come the through? The community do they? is wonderful. Is they it? come and help with okay. my cereals, milk. Okay. Remember, three kilos of <laughs> macaroni is one setting. Wow, Ten liters of milk a day. Twelve loaves of bread. Yeah. Do the maths. Yeah, that's what so uh, uh, that's yeah. that's that's my shout out. That's so, my. Look, I'm always encouraged when communities come through and support um, their own mm, um, yes. when it comes to children's homes or, or any any facilities like yes. these. It's always encouraging, but it's often not enough. Yes, it's often not enough, that's, and it seems to me thing. you're the kind of person who worries about yourself and the people around you as well and other other places. Correct, yeah. correct. I am. Um, like now, I'm worried about the children at Epworth Home. Yes, I am looking after my children. I call it my children that they are. So Epworth Home, they're also in trouble? they in they actually closing their doors. Oh, no. Next month. Their place is up for sale. Ach, nia. No, And now what happens to the children? Some of the children have be, uh, been placed back to their parents. I don't know what the circumstances are. Oh, my goodness. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's uh, not some ideal. of them have to go to other institutions. Yeah. And other institutions are also battling because we're not the only ones mm. who are waiting to find out if they're getting their funding on. And those. you'll only know when it's in your bank account. Correct. Wow. Well, sure. I'm tired just listening to this. Yeah. I don't know where you find the energy from, lady. I don't know. <laughs> because you worry about yourself, the kids, the children's home next door. Hats off to you. I salute you, Vanessa Radain, and everybody at uh, Sia Bonga. Um, the best we can do is introduce you to kind people and fantastic people like Maria Pavli from Lotto Star. Listening to this, hey, it's a lot. No, it, it is a lot, and you cannot be commended enough for the work that you're doing. That's for sure. <laughs> Give them some good news, please. You, you're the bearer of good news all morning long. <laughs> it started in Rustenburg already. What more good news do you have? Well, first of all, I just want to say that we truly can't thank you enough for the work that you're doing, um, for taking care of and making such a loving home for 38 children. is It's unbelievable and it is truly commendable. Um, and we want to help you to continue to do this. And in saying that, we would like to give you 148,000 Rand for the home. Okay, thank you. <laughs> There's even a big dramatic check. <laughs> I, I did, I brought a check. One of the giant ones. Because <laughs> gi- it's not sinking in. Would you like to show her? Sure. Oh, so she can, see, <laughs> she can see this. How are you feeling? Um, damn, sp- I can't talk. Oh, look there, look. Wait, 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 hold on. We're going to find it. Here we go. Here we go. 148,000 Rand to get the ball rolling mm. in your favor. Thank uh, you so much. <laughs> you are most welcome. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Lotto Star. This mm. is a lot of money. 
Thank you. Good morning, Angels. It's a lot of money and it will really, really help me just to motivate myself as well, to carry on. Yes. Yes. We want to motivate you. We want to support you. We want to thank you. Good job, Angels. Good job. You're with your own family. Breakfast with Martin Bester.